tensile test is performed with this end fixed and this top end pulled up. You are interested to know the stress strain response. I will show you how you can use the force displacement response from this end to get the stress strain relationship like this curve. You can also plot the nominal stress strain relation at a particular element. Both these approaches should produce similar stress strain curves. I will start with generating the stress strain curve from an element. To get that, go to Tool, XY Data, and Create. And from here, select ODB field output. In the field output, first select the position to be centroid, and then the variables are, as this is the Y direction or two direction, we will get the engineering strain at E22. And for stress, we will get engineering stress S22. Next, we have to select at which element we want to get this stress strain curve from. So first, edit selection, select the element. It's better if this element is towards the middle and then click plot. And by doing that, you have two separate plot, one for stress and one for strain. And uh, these plots data are saved here, E22 and S22. Now we will save those data. So right click, save. So they are saved here. As both stress strain are plotted with respect to time, we have to combine them to get a stress strain curve. To do so, we'll go to XY data, operate on XY, continue. And from this menu, select combine. And for X axis, we are gonna plot the strain E, double click. And then for Y axis, the stress. Now, if we plot, stress strain curve and at the same time there is a temporary data stored here we will save that and this is stored as data 3 we will again rename this plot we will rename this as el underscore ss so by that i mean that this stress strain curve has been achieved from a particular element once we have our stress strain curve, we can get rid of the rest of the data. So we delete them. At next step, we will get the force displacement response from this end and convert that into stress and strain. To get the force displacement curve, we basically fix this end and uh, pull this end up, but we don't pull the whole surface instead pull this end using this reference point. So note that this reference point at the middle of this plane. But to get this point, you have to make a partition and select the midpoint. And also this reference point should be coupled to this surface. In a separate video that you can find in the description box, I have explained more vividly how you can get the force displacement curve from a model. In the history output, you also request the RF2 and U2, which mean the reaction force in this direction, and U2 would mean the displacement at this direction. Another tips is to get a smooth curve. In your incrementation, make sure your increment sizes are small. Also, the maximum size of increment are small. By default, the maximum number of increments are 100. Increase couple of points there. And then when you run your job and the job is complete, you can go to the results. And you see under history output, you have two curves, the reaction force and the displacement in the Y direction. So if we plot, we see both of them are plotted against time. So we will do the same thing again. First, we will save these two curves as it is and then combine them using XY data and then operate on XY data. And then we will combine double click U2 in X axis and RF2 in Y axis, plot them. Now you can see they are plotted with force in Y axis and displacement in X axis. 
to convert the displacement into strain, we will divide it with the length of the specimen. And to convert the reaction force into stress, we will divide it with the cross-sectional area of this specimen, which is 6. Now, if we plot this expression, although it says this axis to be force and this axis to be displacement, however, this curve has been normalized to be stress and strain. And together with plot, this data is temporarily saved here. We'll go ahead, right click and save it permanently. Now this is called XY data one. So let's go ahead and rename it. And we will rename it to be FD underscore SS. That means stress strain curve that we got from the force displacement curve and save it. These two curves that I, we generated from element and force displacement can be found here. Let's select both of them and plot. We can see these two curves found from an element and from stress displacement are quite close. But the difference exists because when we get from the element, it's a local response of stress strain. But when we convert the force displacement into stress strain, it's the global response. Similar differences of global and local responses is also observed during physical experimentations. To practice all the steps that I have defined, I have shared the input file of this model in the description. Download that file named tensile underscore test dot INP. Then basically when you open your abacus, you can go to file import model and find this tensile underscore test dot input where you have saved the input file and then you have the model that we have worked on so far and as i mentioned already to get this force displacement curve you have to really set up your model accordingly and how to do the setup you can find in the video here if you have any question related to this video or any other video in our channel, please let us know in the comment section. I will try to make a response video and upload in our channel.